Honorable Jonathan Asake joins us now. He is a member of the Middle Belt Forum. Honorable, you're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much. What are your thoughts on this uh, proposed solution of the federal government to the perennial crisis, it would seem, between farmers and herdsmen? Well, I have made my mind known, even here in the studio, about three days ago, and what is the feeling of our people I'm talking about the people of the Middle Belt regarding this uh, so, so proposed solution, you know, uh, to the crisis, so-called, between farmers and herdsmen. Uh, truly, the Middle Belt rejects it in totality, and uh, most of the communities within the Middle Belt region reject it in totality because we feel it is not really the solution to the crisis. Mm. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, we have been seeing clarifications because some people will say that have they seen the entirety of the communication? The settlement which has been proposed by the federal government, we've been told, is voluntary. That states must apply for them to be able to you know, participate in the program, it will seem. And from what we understand, 12 states have applied, and they say that that is enough to do the pilot program. Perhaps maybe when other states see it, if it's something that they are interested in, maybe they too can be a part of it. Uh, if states are the ones applying, what problems would the Middle Belt Forum have with that? Uh, sometimes, you know, when falsehood is wrapped with a garment of truth, with time it shows. The uh, truth is that, you know, this program, uh, I remember, was announced for the first time and it was widely reported when the permanent secretary, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, made an announcement to the effect that the federal government was proposing to establish Ruga settlements all over the country, but starting with 12 pilot states, the way he put it. And he went on to say that it is an initiative of the National Economic Council. <coughs> and uh, sorry. And uh, that announcement will make one to, you know, cast back the desperation on the government of the day on, a, a, you know, taking one ethnic group and pursuing programs to benefit and favor a particular ethnic group, the Fulanese. I remember, you know, we had the, 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 the uh, proposed bill that was at the Southern National Assembly for the, for the creation of, of uh, uh, a commission to establish uh, cattle routes and grazing reserves. And that one did not see the, day, the light of the day. And again, we had cattle colonies came in, and it became very controversial. It's all for the full ideas. And lately, it was the issue of a hundred billion when the meeting was held in Kevin State for Fulani Hartsmen. And that one had not rested. We had a federal government again proposing or acquiring a license for Fulani Radio. And there was, and, and, and on all these things, now today what is on the front burner is the, the Ruga settlements. Now let me just say it. Ruga is actually a Fulani word. Again, and Ruga is hot. It's a name for Fulani for hot. That is where the Fulani stay. And they, are the Fulani really homeless? They have their Ruga everywhere. In fact, even inside Abuja, if you go to Area 1, if you go to Durumi, if you go to Weir here, you will see Ruga everywhere. That is where the Fulani stay. So they are not really homeless. And let me say it, that the real people that need to be settled, the real people that need the settlements, the Ruga settlements, or what I call extates today, that need to be catered for, are those unfortunate children of God in the, 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 the Northeast that actually have been displaced from their ancestral lands as a result of Boko Haram insurgency. And they are scattered all over. Go to Area 1, go to Durumi, you see them living in squalor, in, in, in dehumanized environments. Honorable, because, and, you know, and, and they have not been let, me, let me bring you back to the uh, topic uh, of uh, the let, day. Me, let me just land, please. Let me just land. And, and you see them there. 
as a result of Boko Haram insurgency, for years, they have not been settled. Nobody is thinking of building any Ruga or any settlement for them. Mm. The second category is the category of the people in the Middle Belt region that have cons consistently been in in invaded by criminal Fulani hatmen. No, Honorable, if I'm afraid that we'll have to divorce yes. the ethnicity because I don't want this to seem like I said this is a conversation on an ethnic group. This is not. If the federal government, and, and some people will say, perhaps if you remove the ethnic uh, dimension from it, perhaps there will be a little more clarity on this. We know, for a ma as a matter of fact, that almost every year there is conflict between farmers and herdsmen. Um, and, I mean, Professor Alkali was sitting just on the chair you left there, and he was you know, presiding over, an, uh, over this conflict between 1997 and 1998. It is nothing new. It is taking on wider dimensions, of course, because our population is growing. If the federal government is going to come up with a solution, what are the solutions that the Middle Belt Forum are uh, proposing? What solutions are they proposing? Let me, let me just make an observation here that you, this narrative that we, it has this an age, uh, 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 a long uh, situation that uh, farmers and herders have been clashing. Yes, the traditional farmers herders clash that I know from childhood is not what we're seeing today. The traditional farmers herders clash used to happen. In fact, when I was a child, we stayed. I stayed with Fulani in my own house. They used to come from the far north and come to our areas. Then they are looking for land to settle and. Our parents will give them land in exchange for the cow dung, which becomes like fertilizer, manure for the farms. And oftentimes they will make their ruga, that is their settlement, within the farm, and it is temporary. Sometimes they stay, so, and, and after the, a particular season they leave. And sometimes if they like the place, they even transform into becoming farmers themselves. And, and you find out that not only the Fulanese, the rear cattle at that time, even the natives will also rear cattle. So it has been like that. But what we're seeing today is a strange thing, that we continue to use this false narrative of farmers had us clash. It is not. It is invasion of communities. And when we're running away from using, calling a thing by its name, that we're, we're trying to profile a particular ethnic group, it is not true. Because we have an umbrella organization called Miete Allah, which is a full organization that has been owning up to most of these invasions that have been taking place in communities across the Middle Belt and the South. In fact, oftentimes to, 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 to genocidal proportions. How, how do you then differentiate? Uh, you, I, I, I don't know if you listen to Professor Alkali. Yes. Between the Udawa who come in, which he says comes in every year, whom you can tell very differently. And which is, you know, we've been saying this conflict not just in Nigeria, so, but also in the rest of the West African region. What differentiation? That, let me, let me yes, just, what, how do you differentiate between those ones who might be outside as cousin majority of the havoc, which we might, we might be seeing um, from, from what we have heard, and those who are the local Nigerian Fulani, if you want to, if you want to use those words, settlers or livestock owners uh, who are just looking to ensure that their cattle get uh, food on a daily that basis. Is, that, is not, that is not supposed to be the issue. The issue is about people's lives. The issue is about survival. The issue is about a people that have been attacked. The president himself has said several times that the invaders, those that invade the communities, are criminal uh, Fulanis from outside the country. He particularly mentioned Libya. And Mehdi Allah has corroborated that several times, that they are not the local Fulanis. And of course, the, the, the governor of Kaduna State... Do you State, believe that? Do you believe that? Now, I'm coming. The governor yes. of Kaduna State has also corroborated that, and he even went ahead to say that he traced them and paid them. Now, if we know this, and leaders have not developed the capacity mm -hmm. to trace these criminal elements that are invading communities and, and bring them to book, up to now that I'm talking, none of them has ever been apprehended or prosecuted or convicted. Tell me anywhere, any of these criminal elements. And we have a government. The basic responsibility of government is the security and welfare of the citizens. And if criminal elements are coming from outside and killing your own citizens, and you, all you say is that, oh, they are coming from outside and killing their citizens, and you come up with a, 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 a ruga settlement that will again settle 
a, a, a particular ethnic group among communities in the 36 states, who are those that are going to be settled? Is it the local Fulanis or the criminal elements that have been coming to, 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 to kill and invade the communities aren't that have this, not been brought to book? Aren't these some of the questions we should be asking before, before we condemn that, that, the program in its entirety? It's not, it's not a condemnation of the program. So my conclusion is this. Look, with a benefit of what has happened in my state, a similar program of, of a Ruga settlement, it not, was not called Ruga in 1987. The government approved land that was taken from the natives in Zangon Katav and Kachia local government and created a grazing reserve. And they call it Kachia Grazing Reserve. By 1990, it was changed to Laduga Grazing Reserve. And Laduga is a full and new word. And today, as I'm talking, it was an initial landmass of 30 hectares of land that was taken from the natives, no compensation. And up to now, no single native that is there that can even go there. If you go, you cannot even enter that place as a native. And huge development is taking place. Big buildings, big hospitals, you don't even know what is going on there in Laduga. And it has been surreptitiously increased in size to 70,000 uh, uh, hectares. And so, if we have this Laduga... 70,000 or 70? Se eh? 70,000. 70, he means it was 30,000 I was taking initially. From 30,000. From 30,000, it has been increased to 70,000. And it is still there. So, there is the, 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 the plan is to replicate this Laduga model all over the nation, thereby changing democracy, the political democra the, uh, the demography, the economic demography, the social demography, the cultural demography of a people all over the nation and fulanize every place in the nation. This, these, are, these are fears that you have. Uh, these are fears. These are uh, not uh, only fears. Uh, uh, this is something uh, that is happening to me. Yes. I'm giving testimony. Yes. This is something that you've seen This is happen. something that we have seen happen yes. in Kaduna State, uh, and in this, southern and Kaduna. This, this is a and fear. we, are, our, our, the land of our people, we cannot get there. We cannot go to farm. We cannot, we, we cannot, this is the land that was taken over from the people. It was not compensated for, and we cannot go there to farm. We have become the class citizen in our own state, in our own country, and somebody is saying that it is fierce, only fierce. This is real. The fear is real, and the replication of this model all over the country, and the intent is real. Mm -hmm. let, me, let us take a question from my colleague, Ayo. Yes, um, Honorable, I am, well, Clearly, you know that the word Ruga is trending now all over the place. Everyone is talking about it. But that, the, is it a problem of, is the opposition to this concept a problem of communication uh, of the whole idea or, or outright, you know, rejection of the idea in, in, in itself? Because there have been talks of cattle colonies. There have been talks of, uh, of uh, grazing reserves. You also mentioned grazing reserves just a while ago. There have been talks of, uh, of cattle ranches. And now, you know, uh, Ruga Settlement. Is it a problem with the communication or the idea in its entirety? It's not a problem with the communication. Every intention has been properly communicated. It is only those who pr prefer not to see the handwriting on the wall. Like I have said, uh, I, I started by saying, if government is responsive enough, government should look at the critical areas where there is a need for the establishment of estates that as, is, is start Ruga settlements. And these estates, like I have said, we have IDPs scattered all over this country. Now it is rainy season. Several hundred communities are living in the rain. They have living in the scorching sunshine. They are now living in the rain. They cannot get back to their farm. They will be starving. They don't have medication. And nobody has talked of establishing exclusively, you know, settlements for such category of citizens of the country, only to talk about Ruga, that the Ruga settlements will bring about peace between herders and farmers. How will it bring about peace between herders and farmers? And we are saying, even in the Northwest region, there is a category by, that, that has been displaced in Katsina and Zamfara and other states of the Connaught by this uh, 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 armed banditry. And they are all IDPs in, 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 within the, the, the country. Nobody has thought of creating any settlements for such category of people. And we are talking about Ruga, so this program from the onset has some ulterior motive. And I have said, 
Honorable Honorable Asake, one moment. Do you so what is your own what what's what are you recommending as a solution to this issue? Because you know many people's lives have been lost. A lot of investment has also been lost as a result. So what is your own if you do if you do not agree that Ruga settlement or cattle ranching or whatever it is is not the solution, what is your own solution? What's your recommendation? My recommendation is that number one, then I the narrative that it is Hamas, Hamas Hadash clash is a false narrative is misleading. It is invasion of communities across the country by criminal elements whom the authorities have preferred to say they are coming from outside. Now, if we have a government in place, if we have authorities, then we should first of all check our Nigerian borders. Where are these criminal elements coming from? What is the immigration uh, 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 organization? What is the immigration doing? that criminal elements can come, through which border do they come, that somebody is not brought to book. What is the police doing, that when they come inside, uh, that, that they are not apprehended and, 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 and prosecuted? No one single person is being prosecuted, and yet invasions are still going on to, monument, uh, to, 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 to genocidal proportions in this country. So the first thing is the duty of government is to ensure that there is security of lives and property for everybody in this country, I mean, for every citizen. Honorable, can you hear me? That My apologies. I just want to get this question very, really quickly uh, across to you. You seem to have a problem with the name Ruga. Why? I don't have a problem with the name Ruga in whichever way, whichever bottle wine is packaged. If it is the same old wine, it will show. And so it is not the name Ruga, it is what has been happening. It is the antecedents of what we have experienced. It is not only me. Just go to Area 1, if you are in Abuja, and you see the IDPs in their camps, in their, in their hundreds of, of, of thousands, and you talk to them, and you will hear what Nigerians, the dehumanizing conditions Nigerians are passing through, that foreign elements can come in and then they displace Nigerians, make them IDPs in their country, they are not feeding well, they are dying because of lack of medication, and yet... Nobody is thinking of that. Nobody has apprehended anybody. And then you, it's not about Ruka or it's not about the name. If the name, if the name comes in any form, we are looking at what is going on, not the name. So when government says that not all the states will have it, it's only states that apply will have it. Does that change the narrative for you? Not all the states will have it. Let me tell you. Let, let me let me tell you uh, from the reports and I, I have had. And I've, I've made phone calls to my friends in Benue State, for instance, and Taraba State. Even when the, the, the Ruga project started, construction started, in three local governments in Benue State, the, the, the youth protested. They have been protesting. I'm not the one saying it. You've been seeing it. They have been protesting that they don't want the Ruga. But the government is going ahead that it must establish these Ruga settlements in the, the, the states of Taraba, and, and, and uh, Benue State and other states. So it is not about, there are governors that have said they want the project, but there are governors equally that have said they don't want the project. And like in Benue State, there is a law, Benue and Taraba, there is an existing law there that was made by the House of Assembly, duly signed by the governor, and is in place, a law to prohib uh, prohibit open grazing and encourage ranching. But what happens to that law? That the federal government will just go and impose itself and start construction without consultation, and even when people are if, protesting, if that is going and on, that this program is if, if that, that is going on in those states, that it is voluntary. That government shouldn't sign in. No, shouldn't the state true. governors, if that is going on in those states you mentioned, shouldn't the state governors be speaking up about it? The, gov the state governors have spoken. Unless, if you have not been hearing that, the state governors have spoken over and over again. They have stated their positions and the positions of the peoples of their state and how they reject that proposal in totality. They have never left any stone unturned. So you can just find out from those governors and you know that they, they are not only speaking for themselves, but for the people of their states. Honorable, your Middle Belt Forum is a credible um, association of people. Are you looking to engage state governors and perhaps the federal government, if indeed the federal government claims that state governors are applying for this and that 12 states have applied so far, will you not be asking the states that have applied if they fall within your association, uh, you know, for clarification on the reasons for application? And if you're not getting the kind of answers you want, or if it's not clear enough, are you going to engage the federal government?
Uh, no, you see, the, 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 I, I just read, it is reports that 12 states have applied. Because initially it was saying that the, the, when, when the permanent secretary, uh, Elijah Muhammad Umar, uh, made the announcement, he said they are starting with 12 pilot states. It was not that 12 states have applied. It is when we started the discourse on the issue that I now saw another narrative that 12 states have applied. And up till now, nobody has been able to re unveil who, which states have, are, 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 are the 12 states that have applied. And from what I read yesterday or the day before yesterday, that the 12 states are all in the north. And if those states, 12 states are all in the north, and if Benue and uh, 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 Taraba is there, then it is not true. Because they have actually rejected it in totality and they have a law, existing law, that prohibits even open grazing. So I don't see how that can be true. So let us know which states are the 12 states and so that we can engage the governors. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so you don't have a list of... We don't have the list of those but, 12 uh, states. I mean, if, you, if you're protesting based on, uh, you know, the plans already in place in the, in the states that you are already saying, are you not, are, is that not enough grounds to engage the governors already? Which governors? Is it the, go, is the, the only governors we know that uh, is the, the Taraba and uh, Benue for now? Yes. We don't know about any other governor. Have they told you categorically that they did not apply for this program? They categorically, they did not apply for this program. The president of the Middle Belt has engaged them and they said they did not apply for this program. That I can tell you for free. And I, if you look, when somebody says it is just an unfounded fear, do you know that in most of these areas, that is one thing that Nigerians should know, in most of these areas in the Middle Belt, where these incessant invasions have taken place, do you know that the people in those areas, the natives, have been displaced? And those that invaded those places have taken over? And in some of these areas, it's as pathetic as that. You cannot go to your farm. You have to sometimes make an, a, a negotiation with the, the local Fulani is there. Make a negotiation to, before you, you, you pay, before you go to, to farm. Several communities cannot go. In fact, in my own very community, they, 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 they call it uh, uh, near, near Kagoma in Jamal local government. You know, one man just went to the farm with his son. They, they were killed because they didn't take permission. The same thing in the in, in Kanikong area, in Jamal local government, about three weeks ago, a man went to the farm with his two children, they were killed. It's only one, uh, three children, one child was able to, 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 to run away. And so, and in all these attacks and all this displacement and denial of a people's way of survival, nothing has been done to say, look, let us settle these people, let us take back these people to their own ancestral homelands. Mm. Many people have been displaced from their ancestral lands and they cannot go back. They cannot go back to farm. And they are starving. And they are in the rain. Yeah. And then you say that it is an unfounded fear. Honorable, it is not. It is an ongoing conversation. We expect that, you know, as the conversation progresses, as I said with, honor, uh, with the Professor, that there will be more clarity on precisely, you know, who the 12 states are, uh, who has applied, what, what exactly this is about, and how it is that they're proceeding. Okay. We have the, to only clarity, the only yes. clarity I will expect, yes. that I will say there is genuineness and there is sincerity. The Igbos, for instance, they are spare part dealers. Honorable, Let me hear a, a uh, program that, 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 to go. that will settle the Igbos in all the Thai six states to, we, to, to create spare part settlements for them. We have to then go. Then we will know that there is sincerity. We have to go. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Thank you very this much. morning. Thank you. Honorable Jonathan Asake is a member of the Middle Belt Forum.